Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss combination syndrome from prosthodontics. It is important for your exams as well as in your clinical practice. Now, just a quick reminder to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and please tap on the bell icon so that you don't miss any new videos. Now, combination syndrome is also known as Kelly syndrome after Kelly who first noticed this phenomenon and anterior hyperfunction syndrome as the syndrome occurs mainly due to hyperfunction of your anterior teeth. We'll soon discuss this in detail. So what is combination syndrome? As the name suggests, syndrome means a group of symptoms. So it is a group of symptom that occurs in patients who are using an upper complete denture and a lower distal extension RPD. That is a patient will be completely edentulous in the maxilla and there will be just a few anterior teeth in the lower arch. So the most important thing, the first thing you're going to write is definition. Now this is the GPT-8 definition. This might look a little bit difficult at first, but once you learn the sequence of events or the features of the syndrome, it's going to be easy for you. So first we'll discuss the features of combination syndrome in detail. Here is a small diagram to help you understand better. Like you can see in the first picture, there is an upper CD and a lower distal extension RPD. In this case, since the patient has only few anterior teeth, there is a natural tendency for the patient to bite using these anterior teeth. That is, the patient will always try to concentrate the occlusal load in the anterior teeth region since it's the only natural teeth in their mouth. So over time, there will be an increased resorption in the maxillary ridge and increased resorption in the maxillary ridge because the patient is trying to always concentrate the occlusal load in the anterior region. And this is going to lead to a number of things. So the first thing happens is because of the loading and unloading of forces in the anterior region, the patient will develop what is called as a flabby ridge in the anterior maxilla. Now a flabby ridge looks like this. Instead of the firm tissues on the maxillary anterior ridge, it will be replaced by thick fibrous tissues or flabby ridge. And the second thing that is going to happen is there will be a tilt in the occlusal plane. That is the denture will tilt anteriorly because there is increased resorption in the anterior maxilla. The denture, the patient's denture is going to tilt anteriorly. And because of, the of this tilt, the labial flange of the denture will constantly irritate the labial vestibule of the maxilla. I'm going to repeat. There is going to be increased anterior maxillary resorption because of the patient trying to always bite in the anterior region. And because of this increased resorption, the denture is going to tilt anteriorly. And because of, the of this tilt, the labial flange of the denture is going to constantly irritate the labial vestibule of the patient and this can result in epulis fissuratum. There is going to be a mucosal hyperplasia or tissue growth due to the irritation of denture flange which is called as epulis fissuratum. Since the denture is tilted anteriorly and there is no contact of the denture, proper contact of the denture in the posterior region, there is going to be an overgrowth of the tuberosity. So the overgrowth of tuberosity is the next feature. Along with this, due to the negative pressure of the uh, palate, heart palate, there, uh, there might develop papillary hyperplasia of the heart palate. This is what it looks like papillary hyperplasia of the heart palate which has developed due to negative pressure on the heart palate now all these are the features that happens in the maxilla what about the mandible so there is going to be supra eruption of the lower anteriors further supra eruption uh, for the patient to properly feel or for the proprioception of the lower anterior teeth since it's the only natural teeth remaining in the patient's mouth and this supra eruption will lead to loss of periodontal support and along with this there will be extensive bone loss under the distal extension rpd now this is like a chain or like a cycle which will go on and on there will be more supra eruption of the lower anteriors and then there, there will be more 
anterior absorption in the maxilla and the chain and the cycle just goes on and on now this is just a summary of events that happens in combination syndrome once you have this flowchart in your mind it's easy it's going to be easy for you to write the definition the features and the sequence of events like we discussed increased concentration of load in the anterior region for proprioception which will lead to increased resorption of maxillary ridge this can lead to flabby ridge on the anterior maxilla and tilt in the occlusal plane and this tilt will lead to some changes in the maxilla and some in the mandible in the maxilla an epilis might develop there will be downgrowth of tuberosities there will be papillary hyperplasia in the heart palate and in the mandible supra eruption of lower anteriors and bone loss under the distal extension rpd now you can easily write the definition gpt8 def definition which goes like this the characteristic features that occur when an edentulous maxilla is opposed by natural mandibular teeth including loss of bone from anterior portion of maxillary ridge number 2 overgrowth of maxillary tuberosities number 3 papillary hyperplasia of hard palate mucosa number 4 extrusion of lower anterior teeth and number 5 loss of alveolar bone and ridge height beneath the distal extension rpd also called as hyperfunction syndrome next heading after definition will be features flabby fibrous tissue downgrowth of tuberosities papillary hyperplasia supra eruption of lower anterior teeth and bone loss under the lower distal extension of the removable prosthesis now apart from these five features sonder et al has added six additional features number 1 loss of vertical dimension number 2 occlusal plane discrepancy 3 anterior spatial repositioning of mandible we have discussed all this all these uh, number 4 loss of stability and refabrication of existing dentures number 5 epidis fissurative and number 6 periodontal problems of the remaining teeth now coming to the treatment apart from the obvious treatments for the epilis for the flabby ridge and relining of the denture the main factors we are looking into are the systemic factors and the dental factors these are diseases which uh, usually results in bone loss so we will have to take a look at the systemic diseases then dental factors that is if the patient has a class 3 jaw relation or if there is any parafunctional habit and also on the type of occlusal scheme now rationally of treatment is to prevent further rapid bone resorption under the lower removable prosthesis and this can be achieved by increasing the stability of the lower denture by extending up to the retromolar pad and further educate the patient that the anterior teeth in the denture is only for phonetics and aesthetics and uh, while chewing the food the occlusal load should be given only on the posterior teeth coming to prevention retaining the weaker posterior teeth by endodontic or periodontal treatments or fabricating fixed prosthesis in the lower posterior region if uh, the lower posterior teeth are missing Uh, give fixed processes such as endosseous implants you can also go for tooth supported over denture in the lower arch and uh, regular recall visits and checking with frequent relining to compensate for resorption especially in the lower distal extension processes so that's it guys i hope this video was useful for you people and if you found this helpful please share with your friends subscribe to our channel and also tap on the bell icon so that you don't miss any new videos thank you